Welcome back. Well, coal seam gas exploration, or fracking as it's better known, has been touted as the next frontier in natural energy. The process drills deep into the earth and uses chemicals used to fracture rocks underneath, releasing the gas. There are concerns, though, about the health and environmental impacts of this process in the US. A documentary called Gasland showed some of the dangers of gases getting into the local water supplies. Back home, the Australia Institute and the Social Justice Initiative have today released a report declaring that fracking is not worth the risk. And for more on this, we're joined from Canberra by Richard Dennis, Executive Director of the Australian Institute. Thanks so much for joining us this morning, Richard. What concerns me most about this, we've seen plenty of research and alleged benefits regarding the economic and tourism benefit of coal seam gas wells, but there's been little concrete research into the exact health and, and environmental consequences or issues with this process. That's right. I mean, fracking is a relatively new idea. As, as you said, we're, we're pumping chemicals into the ground to, to fracture rocks to let gas that's been trapped underneath those rocks uh, bubble to the surface where we can collect it. Now, this is a new idea, and because it's new, we don't really know what the long-term implications are, but, but we do know that some of the chemicals that we're pumping into the ground are quite dangerous for human health. We do know that these chemicals can, if, can affect the, the water supply, and uh, while thousands of these wells are being uh, rapidly uh, rolled out across the country, there's, there's just not enough information yet to be confident that it's safe. Richard, the industry body for coal seam gas, the Australian Petroleum Production and Exploration Association, were invited to be part of the interview today. Instead, they sent us a statement. Um, it reads, the Australia Institute research is part of an ongoing misinformation campaign to disrupt, halt, delay billion dollar projects that support Australian jobs and provide us with a cleaner source of energy. What's, what's your response to that? Oh, I, I think that's, that's typical of the industry. They, they really just don't want to discuss these issues. They certainly don't want to debate these issues. And they don't want to answer simple questions like, where is their proof? Where is their evidence that this, uh, this won't harm our water supply and won't, uh, won't harm our community? So uh, the idea, they're just trying to shoot the messenger uh, in criticising myself and, and other organisations like Lock the Gate that have been trying to draw people's attention to this. And it's very important to know that, that the gas industry actually wants to do this on the urban fringe around Sydney. They've sought exploration licences uh, within, uh, within the Sydney CBD region itself. So, uh, you know, the, this is a very controversial technology. It's happening at the moment. It's out of sight and out of mind. But no one's going to dispute that the process of fracking, pumping chemicals into the ground to get gas out, uh, has potential risks to the environment and to health. We're just saying there's not enough evidence to be confident and, uh, and the gas industry doesn't even want to show up to talk about it. Richard, in regards to, you just mentioned the organisation Lock the Gate, talk us through that because a lot of p people are concerned, especially farm farmers and landowners, that they don't seem to have all the rights to their property when it comes to this kind of process. No, that's right. The process of fracking, it's entirely unlike uh, traditional gas exploration where, where you sink one well deep underground and pull a lot of gas out of the one hole. Fracking requires thousands of little wells all across the landscape and that's particularly disruptive for farmland, uh, both on the surface and, as I said, potentially affecting the water supply. Uh, but a lot of people are surprised to learn that farmers don't actually have the right uh, to refuse uh, the mining and gas industry coming onto their land. So, so the organisation Lock the Gate, well, uh, the, the title gives it away. They, they simply want the right for farmers to be able to say, not on my land, not without my permission. And of course the gas industry thinks that they're, uh, uh, that they're part of this extreme strategy uh, to, uh, to, to prevent them making all the profits they want. When, when most people think it's perfectly reasonable to want to protect the water supply and perfectly reasonable for a farmer to be able to say who can and can't come onto their land. I, the, the industry is saying that it's very unlikely that uh, water supplies will be affected. Have you got any research or what, what's your thoughts on that? Oh, well, I'm, great that, I'm very glad to hear they're so confident about that, but again, they don't want to show up and talk about it and, and they don't want to put their own evidence forward. The whole purpose of fracking, again, is, is, is you take these chemicals and you pump them into rocks to fracture them, to break them. 
Now, uh, those rocks sit above and below the water table in, in different areas, and, uh, and, and there's very real risks that not just the chemicals they're pumping into the ground can get into the water supply, but the gas itself can get into the water supply. And, and, and there's video available, as a, you, you mentioned in your introduction, in gas lands, there's someone turning on a tap and, and, and lighting the water coming out with a cigarette lighter. Uh, there, there's footage from Queensland with, uh, uh, with methane gas bubbling up in the middle of, uh, of, of stream beds. So there's no doubt these, uh, these things can occur. Uh, no one's disputing that they can. The issue is who should bear the risk and, and how gung-ho should we be? The gas industry thinks we should just get stuck in and see how, we, how it goes, and the communities that are being affected by it would strangely uh, rather see things slow down and wait till the evidence has been collected. Richard, thanks so much for your time this morning. Much appreciated. Thank you. And as we mentioned earlier, the industry body for CSG, the Australian Petroleum Production and Exploration Association, was invited to appear on this morning's program, but decided just to release a statement. Now, we asked you online what your thoughts were. Today's Facebook poll has been the topic, should Australia continue with fracking? 79% of you said no, and 21% of you said yes. It's actually really interesting um, research coming out of Harvard saying that uh, it could be up to 50% more methane released than previously thought so all this is about is just the right information and i think it's outrageous that if you own a property they can come in and do what they want to your land that is crazy